Hello everybody and welcome to this new series here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factor. Let's take a look at this app real quick we've put together here. We're doing this 100% in Jetpack Compose. We see here we have a little bit of like a custom navigation bar here. We see the content dynamically changing. Not a very useful app at the moment, but the idea here is how we're going to handle navigating to different pages. As we see here in our main activity, we have simply the one quote app composable here uh, that then is going to house the rest of our logic. As we get started here, as we uncover this project a little bit more, smash the like button to help me out. Subscribe if you're brand new and want to keep up to date with this series. And let's just jump right into it here. So I'll just go in line by line here. We have a data class page. Uh, pretty helpful here to just kind of represent uh, more or less what page we're on here. We see a list of a couple different pages, pages one, two, and three, and different colors corresponding to them here. As we click through on the emulator, we can see that those pages are basically the navigational areas, right, that will eventually have a lot more interesting content in them, but we have three different areas that we can click on. We see we are, you know, kind of using the data that we have in our list. So we have blue here for page one, page three, and we have red for page one. And that is all outlined here inside of our code. Nothing too crazy the rest of the way here. We have a column, um, you know, we have uh, basically saving state of whatever page is selected here. We have this row up top here to, uh, you know, basically display all of those different pages. Inside of our row, we have pages dot for each, and each one of those elements here is really just text with all of this, uh, you know, additional, uh, you know, modification to it. So this UI here is really just one big column, uh, a row at the very top, and then uh, as we scroll down here, we can see basically uh, a little bit of dynamic page content, logic, etc. right? We're kind of accomplishing navigation in our own way here. I'm not saying this is the best way to do it, but this is a way to do it, especially in Jetpack Compose. Really, really powerful. I wanted to explore this with you guys, so here we are. But basically we can determine at the moment we're just string pattern matching what title corresponds to the selected page, but we can see here when page one, that we're gonna go ahead and call this composable. On page two, we're gonna call this composable twice. And here on page three, we just, you know, call that composable three different times. That's how we end up in this UI having, you know, one, two, and three bars. So, uh, you know, obviously inside of each one of these branches, we can have our own pages, some additional logic in here to basically make the UI look completely different because Compose is that incredible. Sorry if you hear anything in the background, my cat is going wild for his favorite toy. Uh, you know, we have this little temp content here, which is basically just that row, that box that we have here, the colored item on screen. So just to kind of show off the different, uh, you know, capabilities here. I have one interesting function here. It's an extension function on modifier. It's helpful to just clean up code at the call site. If you saw my uh, YouTube short on it, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll kind of know where it came from. But basically you can just you know, kind of chain together adding modifiers to modifiers. Uh, and there's one route here where we just added in a little bit of logic um, to say, you know, then if this Boolean is true, then we apply this modifier onto uh, the overall modifier, otherwise we don't. All in all, nothing too fancy. Went around and kind of changed about some colors here a tiny bit, um, you know, trying to get a little bit into the theming here in Compose. I don't know how crazy we're gonna go with it, but you know, we do wanna do things the right way here. Um, looks like we have an annoying little error here. Um, and otherwise, you know, nothing too crazy. So uh, don't worry, all this code will be available on GitHub for you to pull down. Uh, you know, you could follow along or, you know, if you get to this later, you'll have more of the app completed on GitHub. Find the link in the description. But that's all good and well, right? That's just a little bit of this app. There's nothing too fancy going on here, but it is gonna be an interesting Compose exercise. The rest of the application though is going to come from this zenquotes.io. So we are going to connect up to uh, you know, this API. It is a free API that does not require a key. Some of their endpoints you do need to have a key, uh, some of them you don't. So we can see how far we can get with a free key, but basically it just has, you know, a handful of different prominent figures, specifically 256, I guess, uh, over 3,000 entries, and it's kind of, you know, you can get the quote of the day, you can, you know, filter by author, you can filter by keyword, I believe you can even search, um, you know, uh, this API as well, so we can build out search functionality, it does look like we have, uh, you know, some reasonable documentation here around the actual structure of the JSON, how it all looks, how it all works, what each field means, um, 
and, and all that good stuff. So we're going to go ahead and walk through that in a little bit. And that'll probably come with, uh, you know, Hilt and Retrofit down the line. So we'll, we'll go ahead and get that into the app. And that's basically it. For now, we really haven't done too much. So let's just go ahead and clean this up a tiny bit. Let's move some stuff out to a view model. We'll get into a little bit of an architecture discussion in the process here. So as I mentioned before, this column is going to be the entire column of the screen. And then here we have our row here that displays all of our pages. This does feel like a pretty nice thing to pull out into its own composable. So let's just go ahead and do that and do it right here. Let's say, yeah, let's leave it as a function for now. We'll pull all these out into our, into their own files and such uh, shortly, but let's call this, you know, this is that header bar up there. So let's just call this our header navigation composable. This is going to take a list of pages. So let's call those pages uh, nav items. It's going to be a list of, in this case, our page. And then we're simply just going to open that function up. I'm going to go ahead and take this row right here. I think that's the bottom of it. I'm going to cut that completely out, paste that in here and see what blows up. We'll take our nav items, paste it in there. And then we're obviously going to need the selected page as well. Um, we could embed this data into the actual data class itself, but for now to get this up and running, let's just go ahead and use um, an additional parameter here. And let's see, clickable selected page equals it, right? Because we were modifying the, uh, where is it? This little variable that was inside of that scope before, obviously cannot do that anymore. It's seeing selected page as this parameter. If you didn't know any parameter passed into a function in Colin is seen as a val, uh, at, at, from the compiler's point of view. So we can't actually modify this value that is, uh, you know, this, this parameter that gets passed into us. So the other thing we're going to need here is we're going to need the on click and we're going to have to tell it which page is selected here. And instead here, we're going to say on click it, right? No, is it what it is? Yes, it is the uh, current page that we are displaying. So when they click that, we do want to pass that one up. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. We now have this header navigation composable that we can use. Obviously, if we rerun it, we're going to be missing out on that. So we're going to call our header navigation. Our nav items is going to be the pages. The selected page is going to be the selected page. And the on click is going to say selected page equals it. Format this again for you, and there we go. We could simply just rerun this here and everything should be working exactly as it was before. Let's just double check, absolutely. Look at that, it's totally lovely. But now, uh, you know, it kind of gets a little bit smaller, which is super, super helpful, you know, kind of cleaning up the code here. Um, obviously we need to also clean up this area, but I don't think we have good reason to do that at this moment. I think the other thing we're just gonna wanna do here is create a view model. So we're going to go over here, we're going to right click and say new Kotlin class. Let's just call this the main activity view model. The idea here is that we're only going to really have one of these. Uh, we're only going to have one view model. We're only going to have one main activity because we everything else is going to be in compose, in composables. If we take a look at our activity here, what is the activity actually holding? Well, the activity isn't really holding much here, but this one quote app kind of is, right? This composable here has all of our information and specifically what it has is it has our state, right? It understands which, uh, how many pages there are and which page is selected and then redraws the page accordingly. So if you followed along in a previous playlist where we made that e-commerce app, we kind of leveraged this idea of state. We leveraged the idea of Redux, the MVI architecture, flow, uh, view models, all that good stuff, because it just pairs so nicely with Compose. We're going to go ahead and do that here as well. So let's go ahead and take out our pages here. We're going to go ahead and put them in our view model. So we're going to make this private here. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to start to create our state here that's going to run the whole application. Hopefully this isn't moving too quickly for you and makes a lot of sense. Um, but if you're a little confused, just stick it out. It might make sense in a tiny bit once we see it all come together here. So we're going to call this data class our app state, right? And based upon our emulator, one thing that we care for are these different pages here. So to start here, there is uh, a bit of information about the navigation that is available and kind of which content is selected or which tab is selected. So let's just call this uh, val navigation. Let's just call it navigation. It's going to be an object called navigation. 
we're going to go ahead and create, oh, sorry, don't need those. We're going to create a data class called navigation. And inside of here, it's going to contain our uh, nav items, right? And that will be the list of uh, our pages. And then on top of it, it will have the selected page, which is just an instance of a page. Um, yeah, we don't really need it to be nullable. We're always going to have one of these selected, so we don't need it to be null. But what we can do here now is we have some content here to create our state. So the thing that we care for uh, or the thing that we are going to care about managing most in this view model is the overall app state, exactly why the data class is named the way that it is. So we're going to go ahead and uh, call it that. So we will say private val uh, app state. This is going to be a mutable uh, state flow of app state. I think one thing I'm going to do here to help us out because we obviously need to uh, kind of create the initial app state is we're just going to go ahead and create the companion object here. Let's just call this, um, you know, initial here. This is going to return an app state. And hopefully here we can kind of see where we're going. We're just going to return basically the initial state here. Let's go ahead and just save a reference to this to make our lives a tiny bit easier. So we're just going to say val pages equals this. Our nav items is going to be pages. And pages at zero is going to be the selected page. Go ahead and remove that. And then quite simply here, we can just say app state dot initial, right? So not super glorious, I'm not a big fan of this, but it makes our lives a little easier here just to get that initial state that we care for. Obviously with our uh, shadowing event here, we're going to need the, uh, uh, that'll be a state flow. We're gonna need the public facing non-mutable state flow. You guys know the deal here, app state. We're gonna set that equal to our app state dot as state flow. That's the one we're looking for. Perfect. Now we can observe that externally. And the one little bit of functionality that we have here, as the user clicks around, they obviously basically change the, um, the selected page here in our navigation. So we'll just build out a simple function for that. We'll say function um, uh, select page, sure. Take in a page here and we're just gonna update our app state. So we'll say app state dot update that provides us the current app state inside of this block which is really really nice and then we will need to return at update it dot copy the navigation equals it dot navigation dot copy and then the selected page equals not it sorry page that gets passed in and there we have it we're going to go ahead and update the flow here we will observe the changes here so we just need to connect up all the dots here. All right, and there we have it. We're gonna have our view model here. Uh, this does come from one thing, one library that we added in very quickly. I believe it is, yep, this Android X lifecycle uh, view model compose 2.6.1. If you pull the project down, you'll have all this in there, but just so you're aware, these are kind of, uh, you know, two really fantastic, very standard libraries that you kind of pull in uh, I didn't bore you with the details there, but that's exactly how we get that. And basically this view model is going to be scoped to this composable. If we take a look at this one quote app composable, it is then scoped to our activity. So for all intents and purposes, this view model here is going to be scoped to the activity, which is more or less what we want at this point because we wanna have this data available to all of our composables. So now we have a little bit of cleanup here to do, right? And so we have a selected page content here that we no longer need and uh, we no longer have a reference to our pages, right? But realistically, what we want to do is we want to listen to those pages. And what I mean by pages here, in this case, we actually care for basically the header, uh, sorry, the navigation information, right? Which is what we kind of declared here in this data class uh, inside of our app state. So in the app state, we have something that encapsulates the state of our navigation. So we can go ahead and listen to that and I think that is a better thing for our header navigation to kind of consume than just this raw data itself. So here we can simply observe that state, right? And we're gonna say our app state is going to be our view model dot app state dot, we're gonna collect it 
as state with life cycle comes as part of one of those imports we were just co covering uh, but basically you know we'll we'll tie the collection because that is a flow uh, to the life cycle uh, of this composable so we are just kind of appropriately listening uh, and collecting that flow uh, based upon the life cycle of our composable so just you know the proper way of doing things here and so uh, we'll have to change around our header navigation here but we're basically going to want to pass in uh, all of this content here that we need is going to exist inside of our navigation. So we're just going to say navigation equals uh, app state dot value dot navigation. We can remove these two variables there. Uh, obviously need a comma here and then we need to update our header navigation. Instead, this is going to take navigation, which has our app state dot navigation. Kind of breaks all of our info. So give me a second here. Uh, dot, what is that? Nav items dot for each, and then our selected page is going to be the navigation dot selected page there, and everything else works as normal. So you know we had two parameters before. Now we just have one. Super helpful to kind of clean that stuff up. And let's see here. We are all good, except we don't care for now when it is clicked. We don't want to update this variable here because obviously that is going away. So we're gonna go ahead and destroy that. We're gonna say on click, we will pass it to our view model and we'll say view model dot select page and it, the page that was selected is passed into this Lambda. So we simply just delegate that work to our view model, starting to get uh, you know a little bit of an architecture together here. Now our selected page can come from the app state. So we can just simply fix this by saying selected page equals our app state dot value dot navigation dot selected page. And there we go. All of this stuff kind of just comes back together. All of the red goes away, which is always a nice feeling. And let's go ahead and rerun things here, see how it all functions. We seem like we have page one selected. We click over, we see page two and three. So now this is functioning exactly how it was before. No, no functional changes whatsoever, but we've introduced a little bit of a view model. We've pulled out our header information into uh, its own composable, which we can then clean up in its own file. And now the application is slowly but surely starting to take shape. So if you made it this far in the video, I really do appreciate you watching it all the way through. Subscribe if you're brand new, smash that like button to help me out here. And hopefully this wasn't, uh, hopefully you learned something, right? And it wasn't too much to kind of consume in the beginning episode here. But uh, we will explore this a lot more and talk a little bit more about it, uh, you know, in depth as we start to get in and start building out more and more interactions. So I'm excited to see you there and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.